Hello, today's Bible study comes from John chapter 7, verses 25 through 36, um, and it reads as follows. At this point, some of the people of Jerusalem began to ask, isn't the man they are trying to kill? Isn't this the man they are trying to kill? Here he is speaking publicly, and they are not saying a word to him. Have the authorities really concluded that he is the Messiah? But we know where this man is from. When the Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. Then Jesus, still teaching in the temple courts, cried out, Yes, you know me, and you know where I am from. I am not here on my own authority, but he who sent me is true. You do not know him, but I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. At this, they tried to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. Still many in the crowd believed in him. They said, when the Messiah comes, will he perform more signs than this man? The Pharisees heard the crowd whispering such things about him. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees sent temple guards to arrest him. Jesus said, I am with you for only a short time, and then I am going to the one who sent me. You will look for me, but you will not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where did this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Will he go where our people live, scattered among the Greeks, and teach the Greeks? What did he mean when he said, You will look for me, but you will not find me? And where I am, you cannot come. Woo, amen. So, at this point, Jesus had been teaching them, and as you see in verse 25, it says at this point, some of the people of Jerusalem began to ask, isn't this the man they are trying to kill? And that answer is a yes. <laughs> they were trying to kill him. And the now the people from Jerusalem knew that the religious, leader, the religious leaders wanted to kill Jesus. The crowd that came from the feast they didn't know, but those from Jerusalem, from the capital, Jerusalem, they knew that the religious leaders wanted to kill him. And then it, it talks about how he was speaking. You know, Jesus wasn't just being all nonchalant. It says, here he is speaking publicly, and they are not saying a word to him. Have authorities, have the authorities really concluded that he is the Messiah? Well, Jesus is bold about his speaking. When he's teaching, he's teaching. When he's working for the Lord, he's working for the Lord. He's not worried about man. And even with this situation happening, as I told you before, he was never afraid. There was never fear. He wasn't intimidated by them. He knew what the job was that he came to do. He chose to come do it, and his father gave him to us. But he spoke boldly, even in this situation of trouble. Hint for us. And no one could make him stop, because how you going to make somebody stop when you don't know? what they talking about. Jesus was talking about things they didn't know of and was teaching. And people were receiving this teaching and wanted to know more. So it tells you, we know where this man is from. See, they knew where the man was from for birth. And Jesus had told them where he came from, but but they didn't, they weren't listening. But when the Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. See, they were still waiting for this Messiah to appear suddenly and boom and out of nowhere. But if you read the scriptures and read what was stated and believe in what it said, it happened just like they were told. It, even if you look back in Malachi, there was going to be a messenger 
who prepared the way for him, John the Baptist, preparing the way for Jesus. Uh-oh. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. He's the covenant, the messenger of the covenant. In whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Jesus is coming. But they thought that the Messiah was going to pip pop poof and he was there and show himself to be in their presence. We know where this man is from. This man comes from Bethlehem to them. As I said, they know they know who Jesus was as far as his physical sense. And of this man comes from Nazareth. And so you got Jesus of Nazareth. But they only knew the physical appearance. They couldn't see past the physical. They weren't listening to the authority he spoke with. They weren't looking at the things that he could do that others couldn't do. Even the, the holders of the law couldn't do these things. And he says, you both know me and you know where I am from. And to me, it sounds like Jesus is kind of being sarcastic towards them. Because they thought they did. And he does tell them that they know him. But they don't. See, the, the thing about Jesus, you knew where he was physically at, but to know him, you had to know where he was spiritually from. See, this is when the appearance is the physical and knowing is the spiritual. So he does tell them that. And it probably confused them. So they were probably wondering if he was really who he said he was, if he was the son of God and the Messiah, or if he was someone else. Mm. So when I get back in it at this, and Jesus is still teaching at the temple courts, cried out, yes, you know me. He's telling them, you know me, and you know where I'm from. You do. But then he cleans it up because he says, I'm not here on my own authority. I'm not here on my own authority, so you should know this. But he who sent me is true. Remember, he said, do you not follow in the law? Are you not reading the word? Did you not heed the prophets? Did they not all speak of me? Uh-oh. But he really, he really gets it in when he says, but he who sent me is true. And then he says, you know why you don't know who I am? Because you do not know him. But I know him. I know him. I know my father because I am from him. And he sent me. Now, this probably was infuriating to them to hear him say that. Because Jesus wasn't just claiming to be from here. <laughs> Where you may know me from. You may know me as this poor, lonely carpenter's son who doesn't have much in the wealth industry, I may not be a king ruling over people, taking land and running things. I may not be selfish and greedy. But if you really knew me, you would know him. And if you knew him, then you would know me. So at this, they tried to seize him. Uh-oh. They tried to get at Jesus. But no one laid a hand on him because his hour had not yet come. And that's that's God. See, God got a plan. The, when the time would come where Jesus could have a hand laid on him, it would be laid on him. But until then, no one could hand a lay, on, hand, lay a hand on Jesus. And you'll see, Jesus is going to tell you even later on in the in the word, when you can lay a hand on him. But right now ain't the time. And until that hour, like I said, the Lord kept him. He was protected. 
It just, they couldn't lay a hand on him. Many of the people believed in him, and I would have believed in him just seeing this. But hearing his word, too, had to be impressive. And to hear no man ever speak like this, even the arresting officers wanted to get him. Remember, the officers even answered, no man ever spoke like this man. Hmm. Authority, knowing, knowledge, and the people believed in him. Their faith was growing. They were seeing things happen. Not only could no one lay a hand on him, but his word was strong. It was true, and it was piercing. It was doing what the word is intended to do. So, what did they do? They left him alone because they couldn't touch him. They, The crowd believed in him. And they had questions, but they believed in him. So the Pharisees heard the crowd. The Pharisees was bothered with the crowd. They were whispering such things about him, acknowledging who he was. Then once again, our holier-than-holy chief priest, and once again the law abiding, sent temple guards to arrest him. So Jesus clears it up and says, look, man, I'm with you only for a short time, and then I am going to go. I'm going to go to the one who sent me. Uh-oh, I'm going to go back to my father in glory. you going to look for me on this realm, on this world, but you will not find me. You will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come. You got a lot of work to do. You still got to believe. You still got to go to me to get to the Father. You don't even know, some of you, who the vessel is that is standing in front of you teaching you. But when your faith grows and you start believing, your eyes and spirit will open up and you will recognize that I am the Son of God, the true Messiah that came down to be the sacrifice for you. And when I leave... I will be the mediator for you to the Father. You won't have to sacrifice again. You won't have to kill anything. There will be no more bloodshed. There will be no more incense needed. All of that stuff will be done and gone because I am it. But right now, you don't understand this, so you cannot come because it ain't your time. The Jews said to one another, where does this man intend to go that we cannot find him? Uh-oh, they thinking physical, Jesus is talking spiritual. Will he go where our people live scattered among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? Uh-oh, they thinking physical, Jesus is talking spiritual. What did he mean when he said, you will look for me, but you will not find me? And where I am, you cannot come. They had questions, and it all dealt with the physical. And Jesus was talking about the spiritual. When the guards came to get Jesus, and he told them that I will only be with you for a short time, only a little longer, Jesus was telling them he would go away but only at the appointed time. And that was when he ascended into heaven. He was going to keep praising God. He was going to keep giving glory. He was going to keep doing miracles. He was going to keep teaching. He was going to keep preaching. He was going to keep doing the will of the God, the will of God. Woo. And then when they talked about where he was going, as I said, we speak in a physical and Jesus is all spiritual. He wasn't going to all these places. See, that's why the faith was growing and followers were growing, because they were going to go to these places. But Jesus wasn't going there. You will seek me and not find me. And this this messed them up because, what you mean by that? Where are you going? 
What does that mean? It means that he would not be seen by people here, by the hostile people. Those intending to arrest him, those intending to kill him, he was going to be going in at that time when he was appointed that time, you'll see him. And then after that, when he comes back for those few days to walk amongst us, and they were more than a few, remember he let the disciples touch him and he was walking with them and ate fish with them, but then he went to glory and he ain't coming back until that appointed time. Jesus was about doing his father's work at all times. And they still trying to figure out who he is, and he is steadily telling them. There was division in this situation because those that believed, believed, and those that didn't, didn't. But Jesus was telling them who he was. Amen.